License plates are a huge area that many people miss because they don't assume they'll carry a huge value. But the license plates you have laying around the house or in the garage right now could be worth a small fortune. Hey, it's done. Today we're going to look at the value in license plates. You could have one laying around the house right now and not have a single solitary clue that it's worth thousands of dollars. It doesn't have to be super old. It doesn't have to be in the greatest condition to still carry a value. There are many different varieties, variants, and versions of them also. You can also find them in many different sizes, shapes, and designs, including kit ones that you actually made yourself. Now, most of the earlier license plates that you will see going for the most money are porcelain. Obviously, the better the condition, the higher the price will be. It is expected to have some issues with most of the earlier ones. As you can see here, there is some rust. There is some damage where the actual porcelain is completely missing from this license plate here. That's not unusual. It's still sold for thousands of dollars, just as you see it. This one here, it's a for hire plate. It's basically a rental like a taxi service. And for one to survive to this day is unheard of. So the prices are immensely high for the oddball type of plates. Now, as I said earlier, plates are usually some of the better ones. This one's early and it's in excellent condition. Now, another interesting thing to consider about license plates from this era, the size is all over the place. Even the shape in some cases could be all over the place. It's not going to look like a standard modern day license plate at all. Someone may not even understand that this is a license plate based on the looks of it. It doesn't have a specific state. It's not even uh, very obvious if that 1905 is a date or some other type of number. Some people may confuse these with foreign license plates because of the shape and the fact that there is no state designation on the plate itself. But this is super early. Wouldn't have had any of that with it as you see here. And these sell for thousands of dollars. Now here's the first year of Alabama license plates here from 1912. Now how would you know the date on this? There are many different price guides that describe the specifics for each state and for the license plate itself. There's historical groups that collect them, individual state groups, as well as national clubs and societies that are heavy into these sorts of collectibles. This one's not in the best condition. One thing, too, to consider when you run into these, many times they will be repainted or resurfaced. So you've got to be careful on that, too. What everybody's going to want and what will carry the most money are original ones that are untouched, unmessed with, and unrepaired. This one sold for thousands of dollars as well. Now, in some states and areas, there were also dashboard discs. It's basically a little tiny plate that would have been mounted on the dashboard that gave you permission to use that vehicle in a town and municipality, even in other countries or states in general. This one is from the territory of Hawaii from 1915. And this one almost surely to me looks like it was dug out of the ground. Probably someone metal detecting dug this one up, cleaned it up, and found a very fine example. The back has obvious age, obvious uh, signs of it being in the ground. It doesn't have to be in super nice condition. This may have been plated or enameled at some point, but that's all gone at this point. It's from a rare area. Territory of Hawaii wouldn't have had many vehicles to begin with over $3,100 for this rare Doug example. Now, as I said, condition isn't always everything when it comes to a rare tag. This is a 1912 Delaware motorcycle license plate tag. This one looks like it was buried in the ground or found in the ground somewhere. It's seen way better days. Again, the condition is terrible, but it's still sold for several thousand dollars because, again, it is an extremely rare plate. Now, age isn't always a super huge factor. Sometimes the type of plate, this is a commercial plate from Pennsylvania from 1940. A commercial plate doesn't show up very often. 
A plate from 1940, once it wasn't being used, probably would have been recycled for the war effort during World War II. So many of these sorts of things wouldn't be found. They're just gone. So even a semi-common plate like this one from Pennsylvania from 1940 still can sell for $2,500 plus dollars. Look for the variety, the unique, the different aspect of it, and that's where most of the money will be at. Now, here's an interesting one from 1908 from Ohio, and it's from Cincinnati specifically, and this may be another dashboard plate here. There are many different varieties and versions of license plates. The more unique, the more interesting like this one here, the higher the price. Now, another option that was offered through most states at the dawning of cars in general were kits. You could get a kit and get the proper letters and you would put the plate together yourself. This is a perfect example of that. Each letter is separate and they slide onto a base. And as you see on the left there, there's a locking piece that screws into place. That locking piece is actually on both sides. You would just slide in the word Texas. You could have put in Ohio, whatever state you were in, you would just add the text for that state. There are many different versions of kits, not just made of porcelain, but of other different types of varieties, which we'll show you another example in just a minute here. Now, these can easily sell for several thousand dollars depending on the age and the state that it's from. Now, here's a 1911 North Dakota license plate. Again, first issue year. This is the first year that they issued plates. And this one has a ton of wear. It looks like most of the surface itself is deteriorating. It has many, many issues to it, but it's still an extremely rare plate sold for well over a thousand bucks. Now like the kit we showed you earlier from Texas, this is another type of kit you can buy. This was a leather one. You would get a leather one and you would have riveted on the letters for your license plate number. And then this would have been mounted on your car. Now these tend to shrink. So many times if you see a size stated in a price guide or in a book or online of what most of them should be, yours may be a little smaller. It is very common for these leather objects like this to shrink and dry up. It's extremely scarce. Any of the leather ones can sell for hundreds, if not thousands of dollars as well. This is one of those items you may easily miss and not understand that it's a license plate to begin with. Now here's a variant truck plate from Massachusetts from 1929. It has a codfish on the bottom of it there. It's a truck plate. It's original. The original paint is still on there. And again, that's what everybody wants with these. Truck plate wise, there weren't as many of them made as other plates. The number itself can dictate what type of vehicle it had. In many cases, the state that issued the plate may still have records of who owned it. Now, something else to think about with license plates, they came in pairs for the most part. Having a pair is far scarcer than having a single plate. So when you have the pair, it can be worth more than double what a single plate is worth because it's almost impossible to randomly find the matching plate. Here's an interesting one from Pearl Harbor. This is a Jeep plate made by the U.S. government for a military Jeep. This one states it's a captain's Jeep. I would imagine that C on there is designated of that. Very interesting. This one sold for almost $2,000 for this scarce pair here. Now, here's another one from Pennsylvania. This one's from 1913. What's great about this one is it's a dealer's plate. Again, there weren't many dealerships across the country in 1913, so they are extremely scarce, very hard to find. Very scarce to find one from 1913 in this type of condition. This one easily sold for over 1500 bucks. Now, another factor in a license plate that can greatly increase the price, the value of the plate, is having a low number on the plate. If you had plate number one, two, three, those are extremely scarce, some of the most sought after plates out there, and they will garner the highest price. This is an extremely low number for a Utah State plate from 1916. This is number 415. Even in not so great condition, it will sell far better than a plate with five, six, or more digits on it. Now, like I said earlier, the age isn't always a factor on plates. This one's from the 90s, but it's a very limited plate. This was something you would have to order extra. It would have cost you more to get this one. This one came out in 1994. Now, there are records of how many of these plates were actually ordered and paid for, and that number is around 250 sets of these plates. So though it doesn't look like something spectacular, it's 
from New York, a major state with tons of plates being printed each year. It's from a, a modern day year, 1990s. It's still sold for over $1,500. Now this one's a little different than some of the other ones. A single plate on this one here could still sell for a thousand bucks. And that is only because they're extremely scarce in any form to show up at all. Again, because there weren't many issued. Now, as I said earlier, motorcycle plates were extremely scarce in 1915 compared to car plates. This one's even more unique than the standard one. It's shaped like a fender. It's rounded off, it's concaved or convex, again, depending on which direction you're looking at it. It probably is a fender. This is a California motorcycle license plate. It states vintage Harley division. So this is some form of Harley Davidson advertised plate. It's sold for over a thousand bucks and it has some major issues on the top and bottom. It has some other losses across it as well. The odder or the more unique it is, the higher the value will be again, even in not so great condition like this one here. And lastly, foreign license plates from some far off place usually will carry a decent value. Now this is a 1931 Newfoundland one here and it sold for over a thousand bucks. A Japanese one from the 20s, a Chinese one from the 30s, a German one from the 1920s all the way up into the World War II era. All of those sorts of things are extremely scarce these days and will carry a value. Many of these would have been recycled or just rotted away in the ground. You may have them pinned up in your garage, in the attic, or out in a barn somewhere right now and have no clue that it's worth any kind of money. So keep an eye out. These types of items are out there and there are many collectors willing to shell out top dollar to get that rare item that you may turn up. Well, there we have it. Hopefully that gave you some ideas, some thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell all your friends. This is a cubic foot. There are five more of these inside the new Chevrolet than there are inside this year's older style full-size cars of Chevy's nearest sales competitor. That's based on U.S. government estimates of vehicle interior size as reported in the 1977 EPA guide for new car buyers. The new Chevrolet with five more cubic feet of room. It stacks up beautifully. Now that's more like it.